and honestly YouTube could shut down tomorrow and leave me without any income at all. Hey guys, what's up? It's Kelly again and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about my little YouTube adventure and answer two questions that I get asked all the time by friends and by family members, by viewers, which is how do I make money on YouTube and how much money have I actually been able to make on YouTube with all of my videos? But before we get into the numbers, let me tell you how this all got started. So I officially got monetized on this channel one year ago to the day, which means that I actually make money off of people like you watching my videos. But this is something that I actually didn't even know was possible until about 18 months ago when I first decided to start my channel. While I'm the kind of person who struggles to pick up on movie references or keep up with pop culture trends, I didn't live entirely under a rock. So I knew about YouTube, but while YouTube has dramatically evolved over the last decade of its existence, my understanding of it didn't. So when I would hear people talk about YouTube, I sort of just thought about the YouTube I knew, the back in the day YouTube. We're talking salad fingers, we're talking shoes, we're talking old school Jenna marbles, and that hilarious video where someone animated their friend's LSD induced ramblings. That was what I knew YouTube for. Funny videos that you would share with your friends more or less when you were bored. I had no idea that it had blown up to become the mega social media platform that it is today. And I especially didn't know that people uploading videos of their cats were making money off of me watching those cat videos. Then my boyfriend came into my life. Misha's really into movies and TV shows and video games, so he spends time on YouTube to watch people dissect these topics in detail. And also cat videos. A lot of cat videos. When we first started spending a lot of time together, I was a little impatient with how Misha always wanted to watch YouTube, because I preferred more traditional TV shows with an ongoing plot, and maybe an occasional Netflix documentary about a serial killer. But then I started to discover what Misha and what feels like the rest of the world already knew, which is that YouTube is awesome. I discovered YouTubers like Liza Koshy, who's able to make amusing videos out of nothing more than just a trip to Ikea. Gus Johnson and Pay Money Whoopi, who do some hilarious commentary about other YouTubers. Megan Batoon, who makes super entertaining vlogs and cooking videos. And Bridge Stewart, who makes these unique comedic sketches. I was hooked. I love that I could watch videos uploaded straight from the creator. And I know this might sound a little cliche, but there really is something for everyone on YouTube. As I started to watch more and more YouTube, I started to wonder if I could do it too. I used to make these stupid videos with my friends back in high school and college, and I really enjoyed it. And seeing videos uploaded by creators who were otherwise just normal people, I felt a little optimistic about my chances. I jokingly told my boyfriend about an idea I had for a video I could make, and not only did he like the idea, but he really encouraged me to go through with making it. And after several months of contemplation, I finally uploaded my very first video onto YouTube. I was able to share that video with this Facebook group that I'm a part of, and in one night, I had almost a thousand views, which was completely unexpected. Misha and I thought that I would struggle to get 100 views, and so we saw 1,000 views as an overwhelming success, especially for our first video. The results of that first video motivated me enough to decide to do a second video, and so my channel was born. I decided to post a video once a week, and I sort of just did videos on completely random topics that were interesting to me, like a review of the Netflix series Ugly Delicious, and shamefully, how I lost some of the, let's call it, winter hibernation weight I had put on while living in Germany. There was so much schnitzel. I celebrated every single view, comment, and subscriber. And it's important to note that I wasn't getting near the number of views that I had gotten on my first video, but I was enjoying it regardless. After a few months, Misha and I were going on vacation, so I had to pre-record a bunch of videos to post while we were away. 
One of those videos was a tour of our apartment in Germany that I had desperately filmed by holding essentially a selfie stick and pointing out random things I thought were strange as an American. I checked on the video the first couple nights and was just happy to see that it had gotten a couple hundred views. On the third night, I got far fewer views and figured the video was already dying out. But then the next night, when Misha and I got back to our hotel room, I opened up my laptop to check on my video and see how it was doing, and I panicked. According to YouTube's analytics, my video was viewed a thousand times in one day. I didn't think that this could possibly be accurate, but then the next day, that number doubled, and then several days later, I got an insane 22,000 views in one day on that one relatively crappy video. I distinctly remember looking at Misha that night and asking, why are so many people watching this video? And he just sort of shrugged and told me that a lot of Germans are interested in what Americans think about Germany and German culture. So I went to go and check the demographics and I saw that Misha was right. The people watching my video were mostly Germans. And so I started thinking, okay. Maybe this is the niche topic that I can start focusing my videos on for a while. And so I did. I talked about German grocery stores, German food, German trains, anything I could think of. And I watched my channel begin to slowly grow. My audience demographic became mostly German and so I adapted my content accordingly. But then I moved back to the US. And I had no idea what this was going to do to my channel because my content so heavily relied on me being in Germany. But fortunately, I was able to find ways to talk about Germany even without me being there. And then I hit a huge milestone. I met the requirements to apply for the famous YouTube monetization. Having monetization means that YouTube can insert advertisements into your videos and then you receive a cut of the ad money from YouTube. I'll get more into the specifics of monetization in a bit, but before January 2018, YouTubers only had to have 100 subscribers to apply for monetization. And then as my luck would have it, YouTube changed its policy in response to some serious issues, which led to the implementation of stricter requirements. So for me and anyone starting a channel in January 2018 and beyond, the requirements to apply for monetization is 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watched hours in the past 12 months. That threshold is daunting for new YouTubers. And if I'm being honest here, I thought that it would be at least a year before I met the requirements. But thanks to my German audience, I somehow was able to apply for monetization despite these stricter requirements within four months of posting my first video. And then I waited and I waited and I waited. YouTube was completely backlogged with requests and their efforts to more thoroughly review channels before granting monetization meant that there were some serious delays. I continued to post weekly while anxiously, almost obsessively, checking to see if I had yet gotten monetized. And then it finally happened. One night, I opened up my YouTube studio app as I so frequently did, and I noticed that there were little green dollar sign icons next to each of my videos that I hadn't ever seen before. I couldn't believe it. I immediately Googled what those green dollar sign icons meant, and my heart jumped out of my chest when I learned that my channel was indeed officially monetized. And then that's when I started to learn a whole different side of YouTube. Up until that point, I was hyper-focused on views and subscribers without any real understanding of how to best maximize the earning potential of my videos or my channel as a whole. But that was about to change. You see, YouTube sells ad placements on, before, or after videos of monetized channels. Those advertising companies then pay YouTube based on how many times their advertisement was viewed and clicked. 
And then YouTube gives a portion of that ad revenue to the creator of the video displaying those ads. So YouTube makes the most money off of videos with not just a high view count, but also a lot of watch time. Because the longer a user watches a video, the more advertisements they'll see and the more advertisements they'll potentially click on. And because creators are intrinsically dependent on YouTube for their own revenue, it's in a creator's best interest to make videos that maximize not just views, but also watch time. So after I understood all that, I quickly realized that subscriber numbers just don't matter like I thought they did. There are certainly perks to having a big subscriber base and oftentimes large subscriber counts go hand in hand with popular videos, but YouTubers with a lot of subscribers don't automatically make more money off of a video than a smaller channel because like I said, it's all about watch time. Additionally, YouTube designated 10 minutes as the minimum video length for a creator to be able to place additional ad breaks within their videos with the goal of making more ad revenue. So you'll notice that a lot of channels will have videos consistently falling close to the target of 10 minutes. And if you've ever watched a video and wondered why a creator seems to be wasting a lot of time showing completely useless footage or adding unnecessary narration to their video, it's probably because they're trying to meet that 10 minute threshold. Another huge factor is the click-through rate or CTR. CTR is a term that refers to the rate in which YouTube displays your thumbnail and title and the number of times it's actually clicked on. So if YouTube shows your video a hundred times, the more often it's clicked on out of that hundred times, the higher your click through rate. And this is exactly why you see YouTube videos with clickbait thumbnails and video titles that are literally screaming at you to click on them. Furthermore, your content and therefore your audience or maybe your audience and therefore your content can impact your revenue for a few different reasons. For one, there are certain industries like automotive, legal, and financial that will pay more for their advertisements because their customers pay a really high price for their product or service. And so if you have a channel that's directly related to one of these industries, then your ad revenue will be considerably higher than that of just your standard YouTube vlogger. Another way is is that viewers from different countries have different costs per thousand or CPM rates. A CPM rate refers to the amount of money a creator makes based on a thousand views and that value is constantly changing. If you look at my channel, since I have a large international audience, you can really see how much the CPM varies by country. Right now, I'm making $7.72 off of a thousand views from Australia compared to only $6.26 for a thousand views from the US. As I said earlier in the video, my content is very German focused and I have a large German audience. Unfortunately, Germany's CPM is consistently lower than that of other countries. And right now, I only get $2.84 from a thousand German viewers. That's a pretty substantial differential between Australian viewers and German viewers. And just like how YouTube can grant monetization, it can also take it away. YouTube has several community guidelines that its creators have to follow. These guidelines prohibit hate speech, spam, copyright violations, and so on. And YouTube has several different tools to punish channels for breaching these community guidelines. For example, they can issue what's called a community guideline strike. And just like in baseball, with three strikes, your channel is out. They can also demonetize a singular video or your entire channel. YouTube is seriously ramping up its efforts lately to rid the platform of content that violates their community guidelines. And so a lot of channels are experiencing some disruption in their channel's monetization, even for videos that might not actually be a violation. For example, I posted a video about German saunas and because I talk about the nature of the clothing worn in these saunas, which is that there isn't any, my video was demonetized. This means that despite its 30,000 views, I didn't make hardly any money off of that video. 
So, after my channel was officially monetized, I had to apply for a Google AdSense account so that I could collect my ad revenue. Google AdSense pays out monthly and only if you meet a $100 threshold, to mean that if your channel only makes $30 in a month, you will not get paid until however many months it takes to get to $100. Misha and I were convinced that I would only make fractions of a penny per video because we understood that making money on YouTube was really challenging. So I had zero expectations for making any money off of YouTube. For the first couple days, I made 52 cents and then a dollar and 58 cents, and then I jumped to four dollars and 22 cents, and I was ecstatic. I could not believe that I was making money off of something that was largely a hobby for me. By the end of that first month, I totaled 212 dollars and 33 cents in ad revenue. And then in July, my earnings dramatically increased, and I rounded out the month with $995 in ad revenue. I was completely speechless. And then November came, and I topped out at $3,238, thanks largely to a video I posted about German habits that rapidly grew in popularity. I thought for sure I would never make more money than what I did in November. And even with December's famously high ad rates, which by the way is why you always see YouTubers doing Vlogmas or posting every single day in December, I didn't come close to what I made in November. But then came March when I posted a video about the culture shocks that I experienced in Germany as an American. And my views on that video soared beyond the German habits video. And with it, my ad revenue took off. I made an unbelievable $5,387 in that month alone, which helped to bring my total ad revenue for my first monetized year on YouTube up to $18,000. $626. My ad revenue is best described as being a roller coaster where the incredible highs come with lows. Making $18,000 in a year on YouTube is an absolute dream for me. But my ad revenue is completely inconsistent and highly dependent on the popularity of my latest video's topic. And it's actually really hard to try to predict whether a topic will be popular or not. And since I get asked a lot if I would ever become a full-time YouTuber, I'll add that at this point I do not feel comfortable with the idea of quitting my job to pursue YouTube full-time. Although I've often wondered what my channel could become if I were able to dedicate all of my time and energy to it, the inconsistency of ad revenue is enough to scare me off. And honestly, YouTube could shut down tomorrow and leave me without any income at all. Although it's been really challenging for me to maintain my YouTube upload schedule while working a full-time job, I'm really looking forward to what this next year on YouTube will bring. I plan to broaden my video topics to talk about more things that interest me, like why a hot dog stand was the primary target in a nuclear war, or how restaurants are adapting their menus to become more Instagrammable. Thanks for listening to my YouTube story. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Maybe it gave you some ideas of your own. Maybe it motivated you to start your own channel. Honestly, I feel like if I can do it, anyone can do it. Or maybe it just helped answer some burning questions you had about what this YouTube creator life is all about. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified every single time I post a new video. Thank you so much to all of my patrons for the support you've given me, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!